Good morning and welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Logan Burgess. Today is August 1st and we're seeing some selling pressure in the overnight. Corn for September down 12 and a quarter, beans down 17 and a quarter, wheat down 23 and three quarters, and Kansas City wheat down 19 and three quarters. One thing that we notice here in uh, in the overnight session, especially when we're looking at Kansas City wheat, is just how wide the spread is, and just how uh, how how little the li or how much the liquidity seems to have dried up, uh, especially um, in these moves. I, I just wanted to. Take a look here at the advanced trader, and this is this is a feature on the FireTip trading platform. This is something that every one of you guys can get in your home office. But notice here, the best bid is at 872 and a half. It's highlighted in blue, and the best offer is at 873 and a half. So we're looking at a, at a penny spread here. I just want to make note that this is why, uh, in in lower liquidity situations, you're going to want to use limit orders. So uh, just keep in mind, if you're not sure what a limit order is, give us a call. 877-472-4607. Uh, we'll be happy to explain it and uh, and provide you with some content. Logan, I know that uh, that wheat really seems to be uh, selling off this morning. It's the leader to the downside. Right. What's causing that? Yeah, Cody. Well, you know, recently here the wheat market's really been pressured uh, or really been pushed higher by rumors out of Russia that they're going to limit exports of wheat, as we saw in 2010. This morning we have some news out from a government source in Russia that they actually have a wheat. They're projecting a wheat surplus. Uh, export surplus of 11 to 15 million tons there, and they actually raised their estimate of production to 50 million metric tons there. So it looks like here uh, the wheat complex is leading to the downside. How far can the wheat complex go, though? You know, recently here with this weather market, we've seen wheat and corn uh, really trade in tandem. It's been a, a fairly correlated trade here recently, and that's because when we see uh, when we see wheat trading at a severe discount to corn, wheat becomes a substitute in a lot of feed operations right here. So for that reason, I think wheat should continue to move lower if we can continue to hear this news out of Russia, but keep in mind that it really, there's going to be a floor there if the corn market stays really strong here. Kind of some interesting action right now, especially on that December corn, now below $8 here. What, what are, what's kind of your take on that? Well, yeah, if we take a look at corn, um, really, my thoughts here is that we, we had a move above $8, we consolidated, it was very strong, it was hanging tight, uh, very, very tight to $8. We had a move above that, and a lot of people may have thought that that's another breakout, another uh, leg higher. Right. So the, the longs, those that got long on that move here, if we close below $8, may start to get nervous and may start to think about putting some stops in and limiting losses here. So I'm going to pay very close attention to the day's trade. I want to know exactly where we close at the end of the trading day today. If we close below $8, I'd be a little bit nervous that some of those longs are trapped and will be forced to get out of the market, and that could lead to some selling in the coming days. One thing I noticed, hey, Logan, why don't you uh, go over to the Kansas City Wheat uh, if you would, and uh, and bring up the advanced trader. Uh, the market, the pit session actually opened up here, and I just wanted to 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 let you guys know here that once the pit session opens up, you'll notice that that bid ask spread really uh, consolidated here, and really we're only seeing about a quarter of a, uh, a penny here. So you'll notice that there is a difference between the overnight session and that pit session, and right. uh, and so those limit orders when you're trading in the overnight session very important. Absolutely, uh, Cody. You know, right now with the pit now open, it does look like the grains are moving back here. A little bit of buying coming into this market. One thing that's going to limit the uh, the upside potential of this market today is the six to ten day outlook here. A little bit improved, but far from the scenario that we really need to resolve this drought. If we hop over here to a map provided by our friends over at Planalytics, as you can see here, areas of Wisconsin should be getting some good precipitation here over the six to ten day outlook, but nothing really substantial. If you take a look here at the southern areas of Iowa, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, where those guys are really hurting, no, uh, no relief in sight there right now. And this comes during a very important time as they're starting the uh, the crop yield estimates for the August WASDE report. We'll be getting that in a few weeks, Cody. What's kind of your outlook? For that WASDE report here, that's going to be a big market mover. Well, like you said, this August report really will be the first survey-based yield right. projections, and I think for that reason, it's going to be a very big market mover. Right. I, I think what we're looking at here is very uh, concerning uh, precipitation forecasts. Uh, I, I think that the precipitation outlook hasn't improved. Um, we've seen crop conditions conditions continue to deteriorate, and there's a good chance uh, that we'll see yield actually come out below what it's currently at right now. So uh, really we're going to have to pay attention um, to, to how this, uh, to any sort of precipitation we get between now and, uh, and the report. But once again, they are actually doing the survey now 
Uh, so it's really the conditions now, right. not uh, what will happen in the next coming days. So right. uh, pay close attention. It will be a market mover. I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, trade more sideways going into this report. Right. Uh, but be, be wary. We could see uh, a little bit of selling pressure as we have seen uh, rationing in the corn sector. Right, certainly. Well, as we approach that August WASI report, we will keep you posted here five days a week on Grain TV. We'll also post live updates as these markets trade on Twitter. At Green TV is where you can find us. I think that kind of wraps up our show for Wednesday morning, Cody. Thanks a lot for joining us on Green TV. Have a great day. Take care.